podcast. I haven't done a podcast since. Okay. But like, do shit like that. It's yeah. like, I don't know how to fucking do that. Like, how would I know anything about that? I just like to make the shit. Like, I don't like the tech side. Honestly, everyone's first mistake is not starting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I don't know this. I don't know that. But like, if you don't start, you don't know how to get better. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's huge. All right, guys, we got a special guest today. We got fucking Brian up in here, dude. Thank Sorry. you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Of course, of course. This would be a fun one because, you, uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but you recently, because I, I want you're one of the people that, like, like if I'm on Snapchat, I'll for sure click on your story just because, like, either someone's that. drunk or, like, yeah. you're saying something funny or, like, all the, like, and we're then going to the Bitcoin, yeah. the Dogecoin shit. Um, Bro. But uh, you were talking about starting a podcast, and yeah. I was like, dude, I want him to come on my podcast. That would be sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's what, gonna... what happened to that? Is that in effect? Um, yeah, that's still coming up. I really didn't want to do much during COVID, um, but that's definitely coming up. I thought it'd be a really good idea to double up on how-to videos with podcasts, because podcasts are really popular. And then how-to videos are also really popular because everyone knows how to do something, you know? Yeah. So that was kind of my idea. And I think it's really cool how you started your podcast. Yeah. Like, literally at the almost exact same time. And I was yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's what I thought would be a pretty good idea. I'm still probably going to do it once COVID's all over and shit. More people are starting to be healthy and stuff. But yeah, my idea came around like... November last year and it just wasn't a good time. So I'm still holding on to that though. I, I got a six spot in my house to do that. Who are you living with right now? I'm living with Johnny, his younger brother Jared, and their coworker or his coworker Oscar. Okay. Yeah. Johnny seems like a dope person. He's dope. He's awesome. I think I've met him like maybe two or three times. He's honestly a great guy. He like, seems chill, bro. Yeah, he seems really chill. chill. You guys have a stripper pole, right? Yeah. So uh, my buddy's dad, like, he was like, all right, move this giant desk up this flight of stairs. I, I can give you 20 bucks or a stripper pole. And I told him, I was like, yo, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, but getting paid with the stripper pole, that's like once in a lifetime i'll take the fucking stripper pole like let's go and that's probably worth more than 20. it was 150 dollars stripper pole. jeez okay and why does he have it uh i mean you know it's it was put to good use and he's now probably past those years and it's just been in his garage and shit so we sanitized it and shit and put it in my room and it's been definitely up to good use it's in your room yeah damn okay i got a pretty fat room how do you um like because I know at one point, shout out Sarah, there was a stripper pole in my room actually, and in the living room in this house. Honestly. How do you install the bitch? Um, mine was just a twist. So like, there's like a, a wrench twist at the top. And so you just, you put it on the ground. You, you put like pull A, pull B, and then whatever size extender. And then you kind of just put it vertical and then get on a ladder and you just twist it. And it's it it becomes straight enough like tension, you know. Yeah. Through tension, it's not like, and you, so it's a mobile stripper pole. I could take it to any parties, take it to a hotel room. I can. I was like, are you kidding me? I'll take the stripper pole. Like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Is it rubberized on the top? Because I feel like it would it might damage the ceiling, right? Um. Especially there's like a the scuff mark here and there. <laughs> I don't think there's rubber though. Yeah. It's okay. definitely the one of the best things I've ever gotten to do any kind of work. I was like, why didn't I not think about this like four or five years ago? Yeah. Like while I was throwing those fat parties at Royal Street, dude. Like how sick would that have been? Those were dope. Those were <laughs> dope. <laughs> fucking those fun, were dope, bro. dude. I was those were the days, man. Um I, I feel like if some, like if a full grown man ran straight into the stripper pole that shit's getting knocked over if it's not screwed into this fucking well that's anymore. what we had tested was you know full grown man sam just like full on like i was like all right you gotta fly like as far right to the pole as possible because we're using you as a test and yeah it worked okay yeah okay it worked as long as it has enough tension you know yeah um and honestly mobile stripper pole it's been a great addition to my room man like it's fun because you'll be talking on the phone you'll be walking around it and shit like, just like swinging on it while on the phone just doing yeah, it gets good use that's dope. Know. 
Have you had some like like females that know how to use it? Use that, it? Yeah, yeah, I've had a few. And Dude, that's it's, lit. It's been fucking lit, honestly. That's lit. Yeah. Hell was, yeah, bro. I was, yeah, definitely put it to good work, and it's, it's fucking, it's a good one, honestly. Like, got the red lights for the room, the stripper pole, like, the couch, the black couch. Like, what more can a guy want, like? I want you to send me a snap video of your room later because I'm fucking curious, bro. Yeah, You're I've like got my room like thing. all to the right and then the, my desk, yeah. uh, like a nice desk. And then the podcast area that I'm eventually going to have you on. Just like, Are you serious? Oh yeah. Dude, let's fucking go, bro. I got you. Let's dog. go. Yeah, I got you. I don't know if I know any how-to videos though. Dude, you know how to do something. Do I? Yeah. How to start a podcast. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. All right. There it is. You know, all right. Like all everyone's right. got talent, you know, and uh, that kind of segues me to like one of one of uh, a story that I want to share. You know, it's like uh, I was born in Santa Monica, moved here when I was ten, but in Santa Monica, I went to YMCA classes and I never passed how to swim. It was like two or three years of like continuous teaching and shit. Maybe I was too young or whatever, but I always had this preconceived notion that I couldn't swim, and then. Um, it was like, I wasn't interested in it. So I never really went out in the water. But then after high school, all my buddies all of a sudden really got into surfing. And they were like, dude, we're going to strap a board to your leg. We're going to drag you out of bed and you're going with us. And I was like, okay, like, let's fucking, let's go. Um, and it took like two months of just like me eating shit, having fun, eating shit, having fun. And then one day I was out on my own and I saw this like Portuguese man with a mustache and a long red board. He caught like this perfect, beautiful wave. It was a foggy day at Morro Bay and he caught it all the way left and I'm watching him and I look around behind me and there was this perfect six to eight foot wave. And I was like, oh fuck, that's like perfect. It's for me. And I just, at that moment, everything clicked. I paddled super hard and I call it the silent wave because it was the first time that I was I like stood on a, a wave and it was just silent. It was all blue water, no crashing wet water. And I remember every second of this wave. And that, that's was, kind of a big wave for your first wave. It definitely was, yeah. Um, it was like my first real official wave and I, I caught it like all the way in. It was about a minute, minute and a half. It was during the El Nino swell of 2015. So they weren't, you know, those waves were huge and they weren't fucking around. And, uh, dude, never in my life, not once, did I ever think I'd be a surfer. Ever. And then that happened. And then a series of more events happened. And now here I am, I'm a surfer. And so that's why I'm, I'm always trying to help people move towards that path of realizing that they can be an individual they never thought they could be you know try, s- try something new you know? damn okay like you might be a dj one day you might be you know like shit and it's never too late like you're you're super young like you realize like uh like i'm 24 right now that's like that's the 14 of the 20s you know yeah we're for real, super for real, young for real. We, super young like we have so much potential in front of us and so much more opportunity than we did when we were kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it's... So that always has me stoked. You definitely don't seem like a person following the traditional lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know a lot of motherfuckers right now that are married and like producing like offspring yeah. very frequently and it's like fuck dude like dude. I don't get how you guys are doing that right now like That's too early for me. It's man. gnarly. Like yeah. and they're they're like committed to this like gnarly like work grind. 9 to 5 job. And they're probably going to do it a while. And it's like dude like oh man like what about what about like trying this or trying that? You were talking about I want to hear about this like wedding lighting oh yeah kramer events man i mean kramer yeah so that's what they're called kramer events and i started off as a photo booth guy and (laughs) you know i took the job and i was like all right let's do it and slowly more like through more and more uh events like they needed a guy to set up lights so i took that and it was like literally my first day was like pounding rails 
into like solid dirt and a hundred degree pass of heat. I was like, why the fuck did I sign up for this? But in, in the long run, that wedding turned out to be like beautiful. Like, and the weddings after that were amazing. I got to do these amazing projects where he was like, all right, this is what we want. This is what we have. Have fun, get to work. And it was like, I was able to be like my own leader in that sense where it's like, all right, like, I set up a few events up in Big Sur. Um, what's that spot in Big Sur? It's like Ragged Point. Yeah, they have weddings. Go, they have weddings out there <laughs> at that hotel. And on the grass, um, the bride would be like, "I want it like this. I want it like that." And I was like, "Well, I've done this a few times. Like, I think it'd look really good like this." And she'd be like, "Okay, let's do it." And like, you have to think about power. Like, we'd have to run like 200 feet of power. So. Yeah, and there's like a walkway out to the, the beach with the cliffs and I'd set up like the lights for the ceremony because they're getting, they have a ceremony and then they have like dinner and I would set up the lights for the dance floor and for the ceremony and we'd all have to get it done pretty quick. So you're setting up lights not necessarily for the daytime but for when the sun goes down and you yeah. like actually need the lights. Yeah, okay. and then I would DJ assist once the lights are done. Yeah. So what do you mean you started off doing a photo booth? I was the photo booth guy. What's for that even while. mean? They would have photo booths at these weddings and you'd like have to click on the, the photo booth screen. You'd have to uh, hand them the pictures and people are drunk, right? Like they're like, where's my picture? Like blah, blah, blah. So it's actually, you know, it's a pretty professional job at a certain point. You got to get the pictures to the right people, make sure they don't like trip over wires uh, and all that stuff. And I mean, the photo booth part was the starting out job and eventually I learned how to, I eventually became the warehouse manager. Um, I would like make sure we have all the equipment that we, we do like, we did incredible events. In fact, we had 11 events at a certain, like one weekend we'd have 11 events and everyone would like come into the warehouse, grab a bunch of stuff. And if they don't have their stuff, you know, they're frantic, they're confused or whatever. So I have to make sure every week that they have their stuff, not only before they leave, but when they come back, you know, hey Nick, where's where's that uh, laptop cord? You know, like, a, oh, sorry, it's in my backpack. Okay, just make sure next time it's in the DJ set, you know? That's funny, bro. Funny okay. enough, we needed an extra guy and that's when I got Jake Bauer hired because I was like, dude, like Jake would be perfect for this job. like. And he ended up being probably better than me. But. Are you serious? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a little more technically savvy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little more, like, um, hardworking. Like, you know, I like to, like, something about, like, pounding rail spikes into the ground. I don't know. It's, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, um, Jake was on here. I don't know if you know that. Okay. I saw that dude. Okay. I oh, saw yeah. that. That shit was fucking funny, bro. <laughs> Jake and Nico. Yeah. No, no that was that was good. Yeah, they they're good, man. Jake's one of my best friends. He's he's one of the guys that like really pushed me to go serve. Really? Yeah. Damn, bro. He, he'd like Oh lit. You can keep talking, Nico. Oh, okay, lit. He he caught you he got you to keep serving? Yeah, uh, you know, drag me I mean my my homies would literally like come to my house, like walk through my front door, walk into my door, like drag me out of bed to go surf and shit. And like, yeah. They, they said they're going to throw you in the water and that's what they did. Dude, hell yeah, man. And like, I did not know how awesome that was until like way later on where I was like, I really like appreciated them for knowing what I'd want and like making me do it. And shit. Yeah. I like to be lazy in the morning and, you know, not do anything sometimes, but if it's, it's fucking, if it's firing, it's firing. Like if the waves are going off, like you gotta get your ass out there. And best days of surf I've ever had were days where I didn't think I was gonna surf. And they're like, hey, we're gonna drag you out there. Like, you know, beautiful lines. It's meditative. It really is. Like the way I surf, a lot of guys are on short boards, like going down the line really fast and ripping it really hard and shit. Like, I don't like that. Me like, neither, bro. You know, I just uh -uh. like, I like to go like, big cars and then like just relax you know like you're like harnessing mother earth and it's 
like in its rawest form of energy, you know. Yeah, those short borders, they fucking oh. unnecessarily beat the shit out of like the water. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they get their competitive part, but bro, like, when they're like pumping, I always find it super funny. It's funny they're like, they go like doom, 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 doom. Honestly, longboard fun shape and above. Fun, shape, yeah. fun shape and longboarding is like fucking yeah, holy that, shit. Yeah, that eight foot board that I won from Joey Nichols like Instagram giveaway a few years back. Like that really changed my life. Like I literally like I I had the choice of picking any board out of their shop and I, any board any board dude and they're you like gotten one of the fucking logs that are like yeah fucking nine feet so they were like in this section so it was a big section oh uh, okay not any board but unfortunately the they're like okay, ten okay. foot and ups they wouldn't let me yeah, yeah. But, but I was like you know what like the biggest board they had was the eight foot and I was like. At a certain point, you have to make the decision, like, do you want, well, for me, it was the decision of, do I want less waves or more waves, you know? And I wanted more waves, right? Like, um, and when it gets big at Moro, like, short borders have a harder time. And I'm more, I'm, I would say more Bay is my, my surf home. It's my, my natural surf spot. And uh, just have the rock. Just up the rock. When it gets classic, big. classic area, everyone knows it. Yeah, it's it's. I wrote it at its biggest was ten to fifteen, occasionally eighteen feet, and it was Jeez, uh, it was bro. epic. Yeah, it was epic. Um, and those waves are incredible. Like they really are. Like, uh, but I was gonna mention that the first wave that I rode after I got that board from Joe's Surfboard Shop, I like sat in the water for like 20, 30 minutes with the board. It's like light blue out, like perfect sunny sky. And I was just like, like, I couldn't believe that. Like I walked out of the shop with a brand new surfboard. I was like, what did I do to like earn this and stuff? And it was, it was the energy that I had been providing into the universe, like the positive energy, like, you know, the, uh, I, you know, recently posted like really positive, like sunrise photos that were like, really like i don't know it's just really positive energy and stuff and i had a good enough social media presence that they recognized that they came to the board and in return i i've been trying my hardest to get them business for the last like three or four years and stuff and a few of my friends have bought boards from them and, dude yeah yeah no they I mean, uh, Joey Nichols right there you know i mean i don't know i mean fuck man i feel i definitely feel um very ironic talking about surfing because I used to do it all the fucking time. Yeah. Like every day with like my friend group when uh -huh. I was living in Morro Bay and then I moved to slow and that's when they, everything changed for yeah. me. Cause dude, for me, like, cause I, I have a sedan now. So like having to put my board on top of my car, strap it down and drive all the way out to fucking Morro Bay or Cayucas or Osos, whatever the fuck. It's and then tough. having to take it off go out there come back put it back up you know what i, mean? I like law, law. like dude i used to live in morro bay bro i went right. to morro bay high school and i would surf Ooh. all the fucking time with yeah. the squad bro the morro bay squad and you guys know who the fuck you guys are oh, too yeah. bro like that's what's up boys i don't know it's yeah i feel bad because i haven't i i haven't gotten back into surfing how i used to yeah you know what i mean and i feel bad like how do you make your commute like you're obviously sending i mean like I'll go like once or twice a week in my own car. Shell's pretty close, like it's 10 minutes away or whatever. And Shell is like pretty good. But then like, you know, Jake will head to Pismo and he, like, you just gotta have like a, a set of friends that you call or like will call you, you know? Cause like carpooling is the way to go, you know? Yeah. You're just burning gas if you yeah. do it yourself every day. So like, I mean, I'll add you to the list, homie. Like, dude. Let's okay. Do All right, bro. Get get you out there, man. Because like, you gotta reinvigorate that like that feeling of like riding, like the rawest form of energy, in my opinion. Like, because snowboarding, the snow is already there. You know, like mount like BM or uh, downhill mountain biking, hills already there. But like, when you're surfing, like those waves, like when those rollers are coming towards you there's just this 
unbelievable feeling, you know, like it's raw. It's, it, it feels kind of good being like picked up and like shot down. Yeah. You know Shit what I mean? down the line. Like your friends are like screaming like, ah, oh, that was so sick. Like, and like something about it, bro. So yeah, I'll add you to the list of people I call every time I send it. So my schedule, I'm just giving you a fair warning right now. My schedule right now is so fucked, dude. Yeah. Like I have a fucking shitty schedule right now, I but, but so you know, you're, like, you're getting added to the list, bro. The okay. Okay. Show. Hell yeah. Um, okay, I have a few more questions about this uh, lighting and uh, wedding thing. Yeah, is this your normal job? That that's like do? my, I would say that's my normal job. That's the job that I have like the most fun with. Like it being there for like people's, one of their best days of their life. It's, it's super gratifying and knowing that like I'm a big part of that. Yeah. It's really gratifying and it pays well. And um, I would say that's my normal job. But right now COVID just hit it hard. Like there's no, no one's getting married. There's no events at all. Um, but I feel like 2021 or 2022 will double or triple down. Like we'll be super busy or whatever. And, um, yeah, I mean. Are you guys still a business or did you guys close down? No, we're, we're still a business. Has someone gotten married in 2021? Um, a few people, yeah. And you were there? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've been at like maybe two or three weddings. Or, you know what, not 2021, but 2020. Uh, so it okay, hasn't even happened right. this year, but, but I feel like it's going to pick up a bunch over the summer. Summer. I was yeah. just going to say summer. summer because, like, the, the sun setting at, like, 8 or 9 yeah. is much more preferable to sun setting at, like, 5.30. Yeah. Shit, so, pretty much, yeah. What, so you, so say, so say COVID wasn't in existence right now would you be is it like a nine to five job or is it like a hey someone's getting married on saturday like we need you to come in thursday and friday this week uh, like are you getting paid hourly or like event leave um right now i'm by event but previously since i was warehouse manager and like dj assistant and lighting tech and all these like positions i was um hourly and okay. uh eventually i want to move on to like something bigger and better but you know it's, it's all up in the air for right now for whenever COVID ends and stuff but I don't know it's something about like helping people get the best day of their lives like it's uh I think their quote is like helping others celebrate life or something like that and like dude it's, it's awesome like everyone's super happy and um it's like just a and also once you have everything set up it's like you know four or five hours of chilling you know, like you just chill, like everything's set up, you, you got to eat. But if one light goes off, you know, you got to run and get that. Or like if something happens where like the photo booth doesn't work, you got to drive back and like get other things. And like, thankfully we've been able to pull off everything that we've done so far. Um, and I'm like a completely like developed individual now, now that I've, been able to be addiction and train my mind change your brain um it's a book i'm reading it's really good it kind of states that like your thoughts lead to your sorry your actions lead to your thoughts or your mindset so like like your mindset isn't going to be like go hike go hike go hike or whatever it's you have to like push yourself to do that hike and then like do it again. And then your mindset will follow. You'll be like, I actually really like hiking. Like this is, this is fun. Like I want to hike more, you know? And it kind of goes for like starting drinking a lot or starting smoking a lot. You, you don't think like, oh, I'm going to drink a lot. Oh, I'm going to smoke a lot. You have your first puff. You do the action first is what I'm trying to say. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. your actions lead to your thoughts. So, at a certain point in your life, you have to, you know what's right. Your mindset isn't there though. Yeah. But you just got to start doing it and your mindset will follow. Yeah. I understand that I had, like back when I was delivering pizzas at Woodstocks, dude, like that got bad. That got really bad. Like your boss is probably baked as fuck too though. Yeah. Okay, okay. But like, you know, if I had a delivery route on my way home, like if it was like broad street or anywhere near like i'd go back to the house 
fucking blaze a little bit. Oh, on the way to the house? Like, there and back. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay. Fucking didn't even matter. Um, and it just got, to, what What it led to was my understanding that like, like there's, you know, there's weed, there's alcohol, there's cocaine or whatever, but addiction is a whole nother thing. Like addiction, um, they, my brother told me this story. It's really cool. It's, um, uh, there's this like rat that was given like an addictive substance and then put in a cage with a bunch of other rats and it didn't want to socialize or communicate with any other rats at all. But then when it was given cheese and put into the other cage, it wanted to like communicate and like socialize with the other rats. And so what addiction does in your life is it one, it like slowly disconnects you from like real connections in your life. Like whether you, and it, it sets you up with false connections. Like you think that you're connecting with those people, but in reality, it's just the weed connecting you or it's whatever that substance is, but, you know, some like, I'm not bashing weed. I think it's awesome. I'm not bashing alcohol. I think it's awesome. But if you are addicted to a substance, then addiction itself will prevent you from making real connections with other people. And that's what I've experienced. And so do you feel like you were addicted to marijuana? Definitely. Okay. And it's like, you know, funny because some people are like, man, you know, you can't get addicted, you can't get addicted to yeah. weed, but like nowadays it's so damn strong. Like, you know, I was putting like hash on top of moon rocks before smoking a bowl. Like moon rocks is 53.5%. Hash is like super strong. It's like 30%. And I wasn't feeling anything. You know? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't feeling a thing. That um, that definitely makes sense. Like, it's um, just the like, I, yeah. I don't know. I because I've heard like everyone say like, oh, weed's not an addictive drug. It like, I don't know if it is. I don't know if it isn't. Like, I can't prove to you the fucking chemical formula and like how gnarly your receptors are craving the fucking THC molecule or whatever yeah. the fuck you want to say. But what I will say is, it's just the feeling of being high. Like, a ton of people get super into it, you know what I mean? Definitely. It's and that's like analogous with like a ton of other uh, drugs too. Like, just that like, the feeling of, like, not necessarily the drug itself, but just like, like, what it leads up to. Right. You know, and I like what you were saying with the, um, with the, like, like you think you're connecting with these people, but it's just falsified. But from the drug, it kind of alters your reality. Cause I know a few people that, um, you know, like, unfortunately I feel like, like when I was around them or like they were around other people, they totally thought like everything was okay, but it wasn't. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so. it's kind of trippy to see that you're like, wow, interesting. And like over the last two months, dude, I've, I've like made incredible like connections with my family and my friends, even the ones that do smoke weed. Like I'm, I'm a lot more connected with them and shit. Cause like we got to be real with each other and shit. And like, they're still smoking. Like if you had a blunt right now, I'd, I'd have no problem. You know, I, I think weed is awesome for other people. Yeah. For me, I know myself though. Like I'm addicted to weed and that's it. Cause it's too great. <laughs> it's too good. And, um, so I, I met, so that kind of, has me segue into the whole like it's a mindset yeah everything in life really is a mindset yeah you know? it's like uh one it's a mindset you have to develop for yourself like that's why i'll never tell someone individually like hey you have to stop this stop that um we connect through stories like we're natural natural storytellers i mean look where we're at man we might as well have a campfire in front of us you know yeah we've been telling stories for like you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And that's how we really connect. Yeah. And, um, like my personal story dude, is, is pretty gnarly. Um, like I found out way later in my life, like a few months ago when I was like 23, that my birth mom had been, um, she used an egg donor program to, uh, to give birth to me, my brother, and my sister. So she wasn't my biological mom. 
Um, and I was actually one of the first uh, like egg donor programs in the world. Like me and my family it was back in the 90s in Los Angeles. Um, and my dad had stayed connected with the woman that gave the, the eggs and her name's Amanda. And I met her. So I met my, I met my biological mom, like over, over, uh, over zoom and stuff. And she didn't want to meet your ass in person. It was COVID reasons. Uh, uh, (laughs) (laughs) But also because of that, I, I realized, or I found out that I had two half brothers. One of them's name is Reef. He's in Ventura, he's 17, and he surfs and plays water polo. And I have another um, half-brother named Avi, who's uh, a Jewish dancer in New York. That's fucking cool. Like, yeah. Um, and I found out that my biological grandpa is the one with red hair in my family. So we could never figure out who had the red hair in my yeah. family. So, like, so... Um, also, since we were some of the first egg donor programs in the world, um, it wasn't later on in her life, my biological mom, Amanda, found out that she had substance, appro- uh, substance abuse problems with weed, which is what, and my dad smoked weed, you know, through college or whatever, and he had problems with it. So the connection. Yeah, I made, genes, bro. Dean yeah, fucking genes. Egg that connection that I had made, the understanding is what really made me um, realize that this is not something I no longer want to do. And I feel like almost all of our problems can be solved with um, understanding the fact that we don't have an understanding of the situation. Like if you're angry, about something you're probably misunderstanding their viewpoint yourself there's just a lack of understanding you know um to kind of segue into another thought um i come i found an equation on tiktok this guy it's called mind hacking happiness before we <laughs> before we jump to that, I got like thirty fucking 30 questions fucking about questions. the fucking mother, bro. Yeah, okay, okay no hold problem. on, hold on, hold on. So you're telling me a few months ago you found out that your your physical mother right now, you thought she was your biological one this whole time, and your actual biological father fertilized someone else's eggs and gave them to your mother. Yeah, so the there's, physical mother, there's a, not the biological. There's mother. a twist. My birth mom passed away when I was fourteen. Oh, fuck, bro. Yeah. How'd you meet her on Zoom? Um, no, the biological. Oh, the birth. Oh, yeah, so there's okay. the biological egg donor and my birth mom that raised me in Los Angeles and in Slow. Dude, um, I'm sorry, bro. It's, I'm it's, sorry. it's okay. Um, it's made me, like, a lot wiser of an individual. Her energy is in the cosmos. And, fuck yeah. And, like, I pick up on that energy every day. Um I'm feeling that energy right right when you said that shit. I'm like, dude, I just like you pick up the energy really fast. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it makes you like, it really like makes you stronger in a way. And like, I know that I'll, I'm going to be an incredible individual because um, the way that she raised me and the energy that she gave me. Um, I may not have her genes, but I still got her th- uh, finger or fingerprints. Yeah. From her womb, I have her mannerisms from the way she taught me how to do things. Yeah. The way she raised me as an individual, I still got those. And the genetically, though, I met. I have like a third family now. Yeah. And, and it hit me really hard, like my first two months. Like I was like, I I felt like I lost my mother twice. You know what I'm saying? So your dad told you this? My dad told me this, yeah. Why do you think he waited so long? Uh, I asked him, and he waited so long because um, it was just like... it was Something like, you just don't say. Yeah, it was just like hard for him to like um, get that information out there. Like, because, you know, my mom passed away when I was like 14, so it's like they couldn't tell us before that. And it was yeah. kind of, it kind of be weird to tell us after, but then they waited for us to be like a really mature age. Fuck yeah. And he figured that like, there were like five people on the planet that knew. So he figured that eventually one of those five people would tell us and then we would be like, 
what way, the fuck? Yeah, we'd yeah. be way more shocked as opposed to if he brought us all together and told us all individually. Yeah, um, that's... So my bigger question is, how many eggs do you think your biological mom gave to the universe? Um, we actually know. Um, like, is it like hundreds? The half-brother. Okay. Uh, Reef and the half-brother Avi. And then there's one other family. So it's not like she just like, yeah, 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 you know, it's not like my neighbor's my other half brother, whatever. But uh, also this was in the nineties. So it was like, uh, kind of like just coming into, yeah, yeah. Like coming into play and stuff. And, um, my family, my birth mom and my birth dad and my biological dad, same person wanted a family so bad and they were so loving that they went through all this to make it happen. You know? Damn, bro. So I eventually came to an understanding. And that also helped me with any kind of frustration. So, like, being able to understand something, like, putting pieces together is, like, huge for your life, bro. Yeah. That's huge. So that all happens. Were you, like, did you cry? I was, so my sister started crying, my brother was pretty silent, and I became, I was super mad. Mad? Yeah, that was Why? like our all three random instant interactions, yeah. because I was, I was like, really like proud on the fact that I was like half Hopper, that's my, uh, bio, that's my birth mom's last name. Okay. So I thought I was gene uh, genetically half Hopper. So he telling us that took that away. So I felt like raw, I felt like I'd lost my birth mom biologically, you know what I'm saying? But eventually like I came to the reality that this is, that's how it is. That's, that's what happens. And I would have been told eventually. And I'm as much Hopper as I am Lippa, Boynton and Howard. So, I mean, like I, I'm actually like very blessed that uh, that happened to me because um, in a way I have like three sides of family now. I've got the Howard side family, I've got the Hopper side family, which is my birth mom. And then I've got my biological, which is the Boynton Lippas or whatever. And they're all super cool, they're super rad. And I think it's, uh, it's low key like a blessing that they kept in touch. They, they're super cool. They want to surf with me. And none of my family members ever wanted to surf with me. So I like low key, like started crying when I heard they wanted to surf with me, dude. I was like, that's, uh, it felt good. Damn, bro. Shout out to my sister for being super strong throughout all this. She was definitely like the one that like. How old is your sister? She's my twin. She's your twin? I have a twin sister, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Dude, the story just keeps getting gnarlier. Okay. Yeah, gnarlier and gnarlier. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, okay. At, at the end of the day, though, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, at the end of the day, in my opinion, your birth mother, not the biological one, but the birth mother, that is your mom. Right, that's my mom. Day. That's mm -hmm. your mom, bro. Yeah. Like, for real. 100%. She, she, you know, like, she went out of her way to have this happen mm -hmm. and, like, create you and, like, yeah. have you come out, like, this way. You know what I mean? Exactly. And probably love you to death. Definitely. You know? Yeah. Damn. And then, like, obviously, like, it's nice being an organ donor. It's nice saying, hey, here's my sperm, here's my eggs. Like, this family over here in mm -hmm. Minnesota or fucking Wisconsin, Wyoming, like, Texas... Mm -hmm. take my shit and go reproduce like yeah. i have a ton of extra sperm she was local to la so they're all local to cali so eventually we're all gonna have like a big barbecue with my um biological mom and her side of the family and um funny enough dude like my biological grandpa which is her dad looked exactly like me like kind of biggish forehead red hair like and i was like well fuck there it is like yeah it's just like i don't know it was it was very relieving for me, like, and so, like, I encourage everyone to, like, go out and, like, access the data bank of knowledge that's out there. Like, yeah. you have to do your research yourself and, like, 
because everyone's a human, you know, we're like, we're all born into this world, like with like our skill level, but there's so much more that you can learn, you know, there's so much more that you can learn. Yeah. And once, no. and once you understand, like, like, I don't know. For me, I have like really primitive survival instincts. I like to know how to like make fires and like cook fish and like do all that stuff, like hunts and like socialize and like understanding that is like, I don't know. It's really helped me. Like, That's why you're playing that survival game. Yeah. <laughs> I got a million and a half views on that dumbass video. Dude. dude, okay. You are one of five people I know that have like a TikTok following, I guess. Yeah. And I think I can it name is. all five. It's fucking Kyle Topar, who is just on here. Yeah, you, I know Kyle. My homie Stella, uh, this girl named Sammy, who I know has a big TikTok following, and then fucking um Jesus, dude, why am I blinking so hard? There's one more, there's one more person I know that like it's gonna come to me by the end of this, I promise you. But I got you. there's like and, okay, and I was wondering to myself, like, dude, like, all these people, like, there's, like, a lot of people that have, like, a million plus views, two million plus views, and I was wondering to myself, and I feel like you'd be a great person to ask this, too, yeah. is TikTok set up that way to so there's, like, a bunch of, like, bots in, like, China or something running up these views, and you have all these people that are like, oh, my God, like, my video got a million fucking views. Like, I'm going to use this app more, and I'm going to get other people to use this app. Like, I'm wondering personally, like, because I don't fuck with TikTok. I don't even have a TikTok. Yeah. I've never had a TikTok. I've never even watched a TikTok video on really? someone's phone. Yeah. Well, no, I take that back. Kyle. Kyle. Kyle yeah. showed me a few. But, um... It, is it like an algorithm? Like, are those real people? So believe it or not, but uh, yes, they are. They are real people. Um, do you have to reset that? No, no, they they are real people, and um, but what it is, it's an AI that runs. So like, you like a snowboarding video, you know, like down the line, you're gonna see more snowboarding videos. If you like stock videos, which I've made most of my stock money through TikTok videos. They'll show you more TikTok stock. Stock talk is what they call it. Stock talk. Stock talk, bro. And so I really fucking love TikTok because it's a combination of YouTube and Instagram. It's like, um, and the views, they only come to you with like consistent content. And then all of a sudden one random video will get like blown up for me it was a, a dumb gaming video i actually put zero effort into that video i was super bummed because like all my other videos are like like uh sobriety videos of like hey like you know i'm 22 days sober or whatever like i feel like everyone should should uh hop on the train and like all these like meaningful videos and then like my one stupid video got like a bunch of views uh randomly but that's just i think out of the luck of the draw um, and I really like TikTok because, uh, it provides this like really smart platform of a combination of, again, of YouTube and Instagram where Instagram in order for someone to see your content, you got to be following them. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> TikTok, like, um, you don't have to be following them. That's why you see Instagram reels. You know, okay. showed up because they're trying to copy TikTok because Instagram is going to die very soon if they don't pick up what TikTok's doing. Same with like Facebook and stuff. Um, can we do it? Can we hit a quick five minute intermission? Okay. Definitely, bro. Let's talk I have so, I'm down for that too. I have, dude, you're like, hey, Bitcoin went down like today. Yeah. yeah it went up 25% yesterday. Yeah. And then everybody sold it. Well, yeah, make people money. were making money and like, all right, I'm going to sell. And now it's going to pop down a little bit. But, but then people see that as an opportunity to buy more. Yeah. And, and then more corporations are popping in there. Saying I mean, Tesla money. just put in 8% of all of its assets. Yeah, that's Tesla put in 1.5 billion dollars. 1.5 billion. That's what I was telling you the other day on Monday. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. And more, <laughs> even Twitter was talking about fucking adding it to their balance sheet. All, all, dude, and I saw, the, I saw, gonna have that I saw this shit coming. So... You're telling me 
Okay, so wait, you guys kept said corrections. What do you mean by well, Bitcoin it's going, corrected? It, it goes up like when that. it goes down, it's a correction. Then, yeah, it just goes back down a little bit. Okay. It went down like what, eight like percent or some shit. Today. today it was like four or five percent. Yeah. Did you buy more today? No, because I I have all my money in it already. <laughs> the thing is, I, I wish I had more. I would buy it more right, right now, but because it's down. I mean, I probably should just do it anyway. I just put a grand into it and I just don't want to put another like big yeah. lump of my money into yeah. it. You know, like I'm going to see what the grand does. I did yeah. I did the math. If you have a grand in order to make a grand back, it takes 16 days. If, oh, sorry. Sorry. If you're making 5% a day, it takes 16 days to make another grand. If you have 10,000 in, it takes two days. Dude, the more money you have, so the more you're going to make. It's not even called money. I don't call it money. <laughs> It's called buying power. Okay. That's a good way to put it. What the fuck is money nowadays? Dude? It's not it's even like money. Printed, but like, yeah. Got, I got like an extra 1600 on my tax return. What the fuck is that? Where the hell did that come from? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's a little extra something, something. Yeah. Might as well throw that in there. Yeah. So you guys are saying put my tax return into Bitcoin. I mean, you, you, so, had a, you, didn't, you, didn't have, you didn't even know you had that money. I have like four, yeah. gold, four, I have like four golden rules. Four golden rules. With trading. Rule number one is if you're a beginner, I I call it pizza and beer money. It's like money you throw away anyways. It's like 20 bucks here and there, you know? And uh, it's just like, it's just money that you're like literally throwing away. Like you just put in like a hundred bucks there, 50 bucks there, 20 bucks there. like. You start off very small. Um, Second golden rule is kind of just watch for a while. Be like, all right, this is where I would have put in my money. And then it goes up. Okay, I made it. Good good choice. If it goes down, you're like, okay, what did I do wrong? Third rule is buy low, sell high. Um, Which is, if it's dipping, like today, 5% correction, it's going down. You either... Buy more or hold, and if it goes up, you sell at a profit that you're happy with, and don't get greedy. Fourth rule is try and do your research. So like, notifications on Twitter, notifications on TikTok, follow like good accounts, and don't just yell by it. You know, you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You're trying to hop on the giant's back. Is that a quote? That's a quote. Damn. Okay. We should. So those are Brian's four rules. Four rules that have... So on my birthday, about a month ago, January 18, I put five grand into Ethereum. It dropped 28%, like almost immediately. I was down $1,200 that day. And you can't sell it. I was going to. I was really close to selling because I got scared. You're like, dude, my, all my money's going to go away. I was like, well, yeah, like, I. that's the first time I really experienced emotion behind trading. And I was like, I was like... My initial birthday wish was that it'd go up, but I got the exact opposite birthday wish. I got the birthday wish of wisdom because I did my research and Ethereum bounces much more volatile. It'll go down 28% and then the next day it'll go up 10%. And so what I did was I held. So I went down 20%. I was down $1,200 on my birthday. That next week it went up 30% gradually day by day. I ended up profiting a hundred dollars as opposed to losing twelve hundred dollars. You only lose money when you sell. Yeah. So yeah. Um it's it's how, trippy, man. It's weird. How do you sell and like where does it go? And how do I uh, buy Dogecoin? <laughs> I wanna buy Dogecoin tonight. If Can you, you make that happen? So I wouldn't recommend Dogecoin right now because it's gone up 2,000%. That's good. It's you buy low, sell high. So in the next month, it's probably going to shoot down a bunch. Then you buy. It's a reverse psychology. So right now, if you were to buy, the chances like, and also you have to kind of do your research. Like is Doge on its way to being a legitimized current? cryptocurrency right now it's a joke coin so it's like it has an unlimited amount of doge it's not backed by anything the only thing pumping it are trends so people are like everyone buy dogecoin once that stops it starts going down really heavily 
Well, from what Evan told me, he was like Snoop Dogg's dropping an album with the album cover. And it's called like Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Like that sound. Like it. It only sounds like it's gonna keep going up, right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's one of the most volatile cryptocurrencies there is. Like, it what's will, volatile? It'll just like sporadic. Sp- yeah, just go up really fast, go down really fast. Has it gone down at all? If I were you, I would buy a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum, because Ethereum's going to be the next. It's like the Pepsi to the Coke. Ethereum? Okay. Yeah. Ethereum's definitely the strong. What app do I need? Because right now I have. I um, use two different apps. I Art. use. I have a Coinbase. Yes, I use. Do you have Coinbase? I use Coinbase. Okay. And Coinbase has this made is me. This is my balance. Right nice. Now. What's your portfolio? Coinbase has also made me a lot of money. Oh, you put in a thousand. Like a few days ago. <laughs> Sweet. And you put it all into Bitcoin. Yep. Um. So, uh, Arx, Chainlink, uh. And that's Ethereum. If this is Ethereum, yes. And, and you're so, saying buy that. Yeah. Right, right now. now, right now it dipped four percent, and so it's kind of a back. It's an ass backwards philosophy that like, so like, it will never go straight up. Right? Yeah. It'll go up for like a day or something, but even when it's going up, it's going down a lot. And right? then yeah, yeah. So if you think about it, if it goes down. And you buy here, you'll have so much more to gain, yeah. as opposed to if you're buying while it's going up, you only have the margin left before it goes down. Yeah. Right. So if you buy while it's down, and would you say it's down right now? It's down like four percent, but Ethereum is going to like it's showing the same signs that Bitcoin did back in 2017. Like this would be its like 2017 spike or whatever 2018. It's going, I think Ethereum will be, they're saying 10,000 this year. I'm thinking like 20 or 30,000. Because Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. It's the first cryptocurrency. But Ethereum is a new type of cryptocurrency that has a, a blockchain. So it's really hard to explain, but it's backed with, a program that allows for safer transactions. And safer it, than Bitcoin? Mm-hmm, and it runs, um, it's gonna be like the new standard for the new internet that's coming up. Like it's called like DeFi or decentralized finance. And um, you kind of want to like, you want to like foreshadow a lot when you're trading. So like stocks that are like, right now, Biden is president. He's probably, going to federally legalize cannabis, even if it's probably it's getting traction. So all these cannabis companies that are like $2, $1, really cheap because Trump was bringing it down. Right now is a really good price to get into those because they'll go from like $2 to like $10 and you've made like 500% profit. So if you have $100 invested, you'll walk away with hundreds. Yeah. Okay. Dude, it sounds like this trading program shit, this is like the new thing for like us broke people to do. It really is. Cause back in the day, you weren't able to. There weren't yeah. apps that let you. Yeah. Um, to hold Bitcoin back in the day meant you had to like do like some, I think it was some dark web shit. Like you had to like figure it out. I mean, my buddy, I remember like he literally Back in the day, he bought like ecstasy with like 10 Bitcoin or whatever. And like, I literally told him back then, I was like, you, you should probably hold that because it's going to be really valuable. 10 Bitcoin? Today, that would be worth like half a million. Yeah. Jeez. Did he hold it? No. <laughs> no. There's people that held it. It's, it's really hard to see into the future. And I've, yeah. I've made some bad plays myself. Um, for example, I bought just recently Dogecoin at like four cents and then it went down to like three cents or whatever. And I didn't think it'd go back up again because I thought it was losing its hype. So I sold out for like a loss of $100. Ended up going back up to seven and eight cents. And right now it's hovering at like seven cents. Um, so if I had been patient and I had waited, then I could have made money as opposed to, but at the same time, it's like, 
no one can perfectly tell the future. You know? yeah. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's, it's tough, but I've gotten pretty fucking good at it. I've turned 2.3K into 7K. How do you take the money out of your ships? That's uh, my big, like, show me right now. Say I wanted to take a grand out of Bitcoin. How do you take put a grand, grand in? Um, I think I clicked on the middle button, which is buy, sell. Um, I mean, did you attach your yeah, bank, yeah, yeah. bank account? Yeah. So you'd go to your, uh, well, first off, you go to this, your Bitcoin. And then sell Bitcoin for cash. And the cool thing about Coinbase is that you can actually convert. So you can convert your Bitcoin. So like, let's say you made like 20% profit off Bitcoin. Yeah. You could convert your Bitcoin into Ox, which is down 10% that day. And then that goes up like 30%. And it's just like, it, it, I think Einstein said the eighth, um, the eighth wonder of the world was compounding. Compounding, so like, like interest. Yeah, compound interest. What? Yeah. Was Einstein rich? No, but he understood the power of compounding, um, and like, it. It's crazy. Money makes money, so yeah. you have to start very small, and you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. Like, um. Anyways, so you would trade this, sell it, sell, get cash for your Bitcoin. Now you have cash and us dollars like you have zero us dollars yeah and then you transfer that back to your bank account okay so it's it, you've done this before mm -hmm. okay i've made yeah profit so i noticed i can't buy dogecoin on coinbase can you not no um but um, it, it shows it where's the fuck's dogecoin at it's, it's... robin hood is what i use for a doge aren't is that everybody saying it's, it's so funny because I've made so much money off Dogecoin, but I think it's the dumbest fucking thing. Like, Why don't you pull everything out of Dogecoin right now? Um, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, I have no money in Doge right now. All my money's in Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum. So you pulled out 7K out of Dogecoin? I pulled, uh, it was like, yeah. Right now I have 7.2K in it. And I have two Ethereum and I have 0.1 Bitcoin. So you have a tenth of Bitcoin and two Ethereum. Mm -hmm. That sounds hard as fuck. It's hard as fuck. I have thing. two shares of Ethereum. It's is that the same thing, or two shares of? Or my bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, you correct me. You correct me. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, so that's Dogecoin right now. It's at point zero seven. Yeah. So you should really get in a good habit of one finding out like what you're investing in yeah and two buying low selling high and just kind of like random videos on tiktok or i recommend tiktok or t twitter or whatever like that kind of just explain like there's this guy on tiktok follow him his name's virtual bacon he's really fucking smart and i've just kind of word for word followed his advice because he's the reason why I didn't sell all my Ethereum when it dropped a bunch. Because he was like, okay, so Ethereum's hitting what's called an EMS line. I'm not sure what that really means. But he said, right now I'm going to buy more Ethereum because any price under $1,500 is a really good deal for Ethereum. For like one whole stock of it or yeah, share? a share okay. or stock of it. Um, and like, let's say you were to buy Dogecoin right now, like at seven cents if at like a hundred dollars if it goes down like 300 percent, you're down like you're losing like 300 dollars or whatever you know it's, yeah. it's really uh it's interesting okay um do you think i mean okay the thing is from what i've seen and what i've heard it sounds like this dogecoin's on fucking steroids bro Dogecoin sounds like the one high school student that's like on steroids right now that's just fucking everybody. It's, it's, uh, I have such mixed thoughts about Dogecoin right now because it's, it's like for it to hit a dollar, it has to have a trillion dollars of asset inside Dogecoin. What's it at right now? It's at like seven cents. So um, it already has like multiple like billions of dollars. And a trillion is so hard 
to comprehend. Like that is a hundred, that's a thousand billion dollars. It's not going to hit a dollar, but it's not, I don't think it will. I don't expect the people of the world to put in a trillion dollars worth of value into Dogecoin. It might happen. I don't think it will though. It would take a, a thousand billion dollars, which is a trillion dollars to make Dogecoin hit a dollar. You know how Doge, like you know how Bitcoin's at like forty three grand or some shit. Yeah. What if Dogecoin gets to fifty grand? Is that possible? Um, there's only like one way. The, nothing. <laughs> the only way that's possible is if Dogecoin like seriously like gets their shit together, it limits their supply, um, and makes it like like a, a legitimate cryptocurrency that's backed by like blockchain and all this stuff. What's blockchain? It's like uh, it's like your receipt um, for each transaction. And it needs like, it's it's so hard for me to explain. Like, it's, Can you give a third grade level example? Um, or like sixth grade. Sixth grade, third grade example. <laughs> um, One sentence. How about like, Middle school, like, yeah, yeah it's right, like right. dispensary weed versus buying weed from like the guy that you think it might be laced because he's sketchy. Dogecoin's the sketchy weed. Okay. But if everyone likes the sketchy guy's weed, like if everyone agrees that coconuts are going to be the value, like the money system of the world, then everyone's going to trade coconuts. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, Doge has already hit, like, such a high peak that I don't think it's going to go any higher. In fact, like, I'm almost certain that, like, for the next month, it's probably going to go a little farther up. But greed, if you remember anything from what I say from investing, dude, greed is the number one killer in investing. People want more. Yeah. They want more. You have to take your profits as you leave it. Like if you're up like five, ten percent, good for you. Just pull your money out. You've already made your money. That's it. Like people want to ride it all the way to the top and then it'll go down. And then they'll be like, oh shit, like I need to hold. And then it'll go down a lot more. And then you're like, well, now I'm down like five thousand. Then it'll go down. And you're like, well, fuck, like I should have sold up there. You know. Does so you you're like actually skeptical about Dogecoin. You're like the one person. at its price right now. Okay. When it was point zero zero three dollars, I bought a thousand dollars of it. Okay, and so you own the whole bitch. I I own the whole bitch. <laughs> I put in, I put all in into Bic, or into Dogecoin because I saw a TikTok video that was like, hey, if we get it all to a dollar, like, uh, we'll all have like ten thousand dollars each. And then I saw another video that, like that. So I realized it was starting to become a trend. Yeah. And stocks and crypto only go up for two reasons. One, it's a trend. Everyone realizes that coconuts can be currency, so we all agree. And we're all, you know, we all agree that Doge is a, you know. Or it's an actual legitimate like business that's going to do really well in the future, like Tesla, um, Ethereum, and its decentralized finance new internet. Um, like, and you have to buy low and watch as it soars. Especially right now, it's the best time since Biden's now president, and everything's kind of changing. Do you know that Biden just signs like? a bill to make all government vehicles electric that's good it's really good it's huge and that yeah. means like any stocks related to electrical vehicles are like gonna go up a bunch most likely is tesla the producer of all these vehicles so keep buying tesla yeah and the thing i like about <clears throat> elon musk and tesla but also there's neo li which is like a, a chinese electric vehicle company there's like a bunch of different ones um but what i really like about musk is he he gives all of he puts all of his patents out on the internet because he's like all right if anyone can make a better electrical vehicle than tesla and outproduce us 
then in the long run, it's still going to be better for the world. That's G. Is that G as fuck or what? I yeah. love that man. Like he's he's awesome, dude. Like he seems very for the people. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. He's definitely for the okay. people. Okay, hell yeah. No, that's a GI statement. If anyone can do it better than me, fucking do it. Yeah, do it. That's <laughs> sick. Like badass, dude. And he's he's hella like relatable because he, he's just funny and like posting memes all the time and shit. Does he really? Yeah. He's, okay. He's the one that's mainly spiking up Doge right now, but dude okay cryptocurrency has never been a thing well I mean, okay it was a thing but like i mean like to the point where like like i was like i'm your average bystander right like when i first heard about bitcoin and shit i feel like i was in high school maybe like senior year junior year and i was like okay like this you know sounds interesting do your thing like yeah. I, don't, I, I don't have money to put into this shit yeah and then fucking what like five years four or five years later it's like oh shit like what's this thing called it's called dogecoin and i've seen it everywhere everywhere this is like the in my lifetime right now this is the second like big spike of like cryptocurrency that i've seen it's like it sounds like it's a new fucking thing because i just like i'm investing now yeah (laughs) that's something i don't do it's because it's a trend and you have to watch out if you're too late to a trend um there's a really good quote that I like. Um, it says, a surfer waits for the next wave. He doesn't ride the wave that's already passed. Take that quote and put it into investing. Investing. Don't ride the wave that's already happening. Ride the next wave that's about to come, you know? And so like Dogecoin is hitting this huge wave. Like it's probably gonna die out. Like people aren't gonna be talking about this for much longer. So really? when it drops back down for like, back to down down to like three or four cents, yeah. which is still incredibly high. It used to be 0.003. Yeah. None I would buy. Because then your chances of it getting the next big spike from Snoop Dogg, Snoop Doge or whatever, it's gonna it's gonna make you a lot of money. Yeah. It's a very ass backwards way of thinking. Right? Yeah. You're like, all right, like it's going down a lot, but it has potential, right? As opposed to, but at the same time, like, you know, Ethereum is like this on its graph. And I'm buying like right here because I think it's gonna Yeah. Go like way, yeah. way higher. So you think Ethereum's gonna like it's so is Bitcoin number one? Bitcoin is number one right now. Um it was the very first yeah. cryptocurrency ever created. And now there's like a new wave of multiple cryptocurrencies that serve like different purposes and stuff and have the potential of blowing up as much as Bitcoin did. You know, like Ox, Chainlink, um, blockchain or whatever. And you, what I did for Coinbase was I put $250 of $50 increments into a bunch of different cryptos. And once it went up like 10%, I would move it to one that was down. 10% 10% and then that would go up like 15% then I would transfer it to one that's down again because once it goes down the chances are it's going to go up All right it's uh it's been fun dude I might do this shit like full time because like it's it's been working out so far but keep like the majority of your cash in the bank don't fucking don't put your your life savings into GameStop yeah, yeah, yeah. at its peak because now you're like seriously screwed. Like, GameStop was like a one week fun and done type thing. Yeah. Oh. I know a buddy that could have made eighty thousand, and he didn't sell out at the top because he wanted <laughs> he wanted diamond hands or whatever. That's fucking. He's funny. like, I'm bringing down these hedge funds <clears throat> or whatever. Um, that didn't work out for him, you know. I'm gonna go pee, keep talking. Do it. Um, okay, so I have a question for you though, and you can answer while I'm gonna be out there. What the fuck happened with GameStop? Dude. What do you, can you explain that situation right now? Bro, I'll explain that situation right now. So, um, to short a company 
is to, uh, there's a thing called options and an options contract gives you the right, but not the obligation to own a hundred shares of a stock. And you can either buy call options or put options. And what big fund hedge managers will do uh, is they would, uh, they would call options or put options. They would short these companies that are going to shit. So like GameStop, like BlackBerry, um, AMC Entertainment, um, Nokia, all these like kind of like companies that are going downhill already. And that kills a business. Yeah. It kills a business. And so what what an absolute shitload of trolls did on Reddit, like 2.5 million trolls on Reddit. It's a lot of people. What they did was they were like, all right, we see these big hedge fund managers shorting GameStop. They're making money by betting that it's going to go down. And they make the difference of how much it goes down. And if buy 100 shares is one option. But if you buy like 10 option calls, it's like, you know, 1,000 shares or whatever. Um, Options are really hard to explain. But what they did was they were like, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to put in a shitload of money into GameStop because we know these hedge fund managers, like these Wolf of Wall Street guys are like making a shitload of money, shorting it, bringing it down. So all these Redditors got together, all got together and put in like all their life savings or whatever. And they brought GameStop up like... 100%. 100%. The next day was like 200, 300%, all the way from like $10 to $300 a share. What this made, uh, this uh, made all the hedge fund managers lose, I think it was like $80 billion or something like that. Shut the fuck up. Man. I don't know if that's right, that number, but it, something it screwed them over because they had a bunch of put option calls for GameStop, which is like betting that it goes down. But then Reddit came by, 2.5 million people got together and they just boosted it all the way up, buying call options, just like ding, 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 brought it all the way up, completely screwing over hedge fund managers. However, what they didn't see coming was that eventually the hedge fund managers, which had more experience, had, you know, they saw what it eventually peaked out and they bought put options for when it peaked out. So while it was going back down, they're making money again because it's going down and they're betting that it's going down. So they eventually made their money back. Anyone that's holding GameStop right now is losing potentially their life savings and more. So GameStop, that that was like a one week experience. That's why you don't follow trends. Yeah. Like it's trends, unless it's like right before it happens, like there's a, date or you know it's going to go up a bunch and then you buy in before the trends yeah and then it goes up astronomically then you sell out and then you call yourself a day but there are people that still wanted to screw over hedge fund managers by holding on holding on to the stock and not selling but that stock was doomed gamestop isn't like a real company anymore it's garbage yeah and so it went down and down and down as more retail investors and hedge fund managers. Hedge fund managers were selling puts for it. And then the retail investors, Reddit people, were starting to sell out for what gain they could. So it just crashed as hard as it went up. It made pretty big news, bro. It was like, it was the first time that like the people came together and realized they had as much power as these big hedge fund managers do with all their money. That that's not the f- like that's not the last time that's gonna happen, huh? No. That page grew from two point five billion to over like seven million. Um, but like I also did my research for that. Wall Street bets is known for like losing a bunch of money, so I didn't want anything to do with that. 
so the good guys, it's called the Wall Street bets. Those yeah, were the good those, guys. Those are the retail. They lose the, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, they're known for losing a lot of money. So it's like, you know what? I'm not going to follow these guys. They have good intent, though. Yeah, okay. they have good intentions. They're <clears throat> they're literally trolls. Okay. Um, as opposed to like, yeah, I and they got hit back pretty hard. So I don't, I don't know how that's going to play out for them. Damn, bro. It's interesting, man. It's interesting. So you can you can gamble on GameStop going downhill. Yeah, it's called a put option. Can we do this? Yes. Okay. How? Uh, on Robinhood or other um, trading apps, you Robinhood is just the easiest one to explain because I use it. You have to set up your account to trade options, um, and an option is. It's a contract to own a hundred shares. Let's say one Bud Light, you could have the power, like let's say this Bud Light doubles. Yeah. Um, what if you had a hundred Bud Lights on this table? Then you'd have 200 Bud Lights. Yeah. So it's a contract that allows you to own a hundred shares of one stock. In order to have that contract, and this contract has an expiration date, in order to own that contract physically, you have to put down a premium, which is like, all right, in order to have 100 Bud Lights on this table, um, I have to pay one Bud Light. Okay. Your maximum amount of money that you can lose, I believe, is that one Bud Light, the premium that you pay. But the, like, let's say, Bud Light, like this would turn into like 10 or 100 Bud Lights. The amount that you can gain is like astronomical. Jeez. Okay. So is there an expense to doing this? It's the premium that you pay to own the contract. Which could be a lot of money. Yeah. And it might not happen. Yeah. Okay. Because if it goes down, you're like, your contract is pretty much worthless. And you lose that money, which could be like two, three hundred. I lost three hundred fifty dollars on a BlackBerry call option because I was trying what? to. I was trying to follow the whole Wall Street bets thing. Yeah, and I was like, all right, let, let's do it. Like, I'm down. Like, why not try? Right? Like, and yeah. then they jacked it all up, and it, it went down. Oh, it went down. I was betting that it'd go up. Uh, because you thought it would turn. Yeah, into I was buying a call style. option, not a put option. Got like, it. Put, it just goes down. Call okay. option, it's go up. So you thought everyone would invest in the BlackBerry? Into BlackBerry, turn that like ten dollar stock into like a three hundred dollar stock. Damn. Which I would have made like an astronomical amount of money off of. So are BlackBerry and GameStop still like in business? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is just so dumb. Like, it's literally trolls. Like okay. the whole Wall Street bets thing on Reddit. Like Reddit is just I don't know. Those guys are a different breed. I don't understand them. Like, they're on their computers a lot. Huh? Yeah, they're just like... They're tacky. They're very tacky, and I don't know. I just don't fuck with that. I, I fuck with, like, numbers, like, you know, like, just like, hey, like, this bounced off this line, which means it's going to go up. Like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah. It, it takes, like, I've been at this for, like, seven or eight months now. Um you're at like phase one, you know, which is like you, you put in a grand, try not to take that out to pay rent. Oh, I'm not, I'm just, not, just I'm keep not, it yeah. there. Watch what it does. You know, next thing you know, you'll be like, Oh shit. Like it rose a bunch. Like, and then like sell or something or like, I don't know. There's, there's day traders like me. And then there's long-term investors who are just like, all right, I'm just going to keep this forever. I'm like, fuck it. Like, let's see what happens. I'm more of a day trader. Day trader. So what are what are the quick ones to be like day trading in? Um, Dogecoin. For sure Dogecoin. Mm -hmm. Um I've made a lot of money off Dogecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like definitely a really good call. In December I was up like two and a half grand. Okay, and then do you take out two point five grand and then leave whatever you started with in there? Um can you do that? I I just sell it all. So like, yeah, you can, okay. yeah, you can take out that two and a half grand and just leave, like, let's say you put a thousand, you're up two and a half grand. You can take out that two and a half grand and, you know, buy yourself a six pack at the, at the store. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But 
I keep it in there because now I have, instead of $1,000, I have $7,000. Got it. And 10% of $7,000 is, you know, $700 as opposed to $100. So your money makes money, right? Like, um, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you have a thousand dollars, it takes, if you are gaining 5% every day, it takes 16 days to make another thousand dollars. If you have $10,000, it takes two days. If you're gaining 5% every day to make a thousand dollars. If you have a hundred thousand dollars, it takes one fifth of a day. If you're gaining 5% a day to make a thousand dollars. So it just goes to show that like the more like money, it, it's literally a system designed to keep um, poor people poor and rich people rich. It's really fucking like I hated living paycheck to paycheck so goddamn much that I was like, all right, I'm going to get into investing. I'm going to start off with what little I have, put, you know, all this candy bar money, all this like dollars. Every time I like, you know, spent junk food on Pringles or whatever, I'd feel like, all right, I just spent 10 bucks. Let me put 10 bucks into my account. And then I was like, all right, like that eventually will turn into 20 bucks, turns into 40, turns into 80, 160, 320, you know. So it goes up. Yeah, it just, just like, takes time. It just takes time. Exactly. So if you have extra money laying around, you are saying invest. I'm saying invest like a small amount over time because, and Roth are, are, are sorry, Roth IRAs are really good for that. I haven't done that yet, but that's a really steady way. There's really safe ways to invest to, you know, Roth IRAs, ETFs. And this is all just like kind of studying up on that. Um, I wish I had more knowledge for you, bro, but I'm running out, you know. <laughs> but it's just like, it's fun. I, I like trading because, you know, you turn a thousand into 1100, then 1100 into like 1400. And, you're like all stoked with your buddies. You're like, fuck yeah. Like, let's buy some let's buy some shit right now on, on Coinbase. So what do you want me to buy? Let's see. You take over. <laughs> Give me two fifty in the shit you were just talking about. Okay. The so, Euro three M your um Ye three AM? Ethereum. <laughs> Ethereum. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, today's actually a really great day because it's down like six percent. Which again, you know, just buy when it's low because you're let's buy right now all right do you want to take money out of your bank nah, nah. or, or yeah no out of my bank out, out of, my of bank. your bank yeah, yeah. okay so buy et ethereum with cash 250. 250 um preview buy so i'm gonna gain 0.14 of one so stock. yeah now you have okay. 0.14 Ethereum. 14%. At its price, 1700. Um, which means that if it goes up above that, you're gaining money. If it goes down, you're not you're not losing money, but you're losing value. You only lose or gain money when you sell. Got it. Um, so yeah, you buy that now. And Coinbase has like a small fee. But it's definitely worth it on Coinbase because there's. I want to show you Filecoin. Let me show you Filecoin. Like, dude, just look at Filecoin, bro. This went up like. That one day. Dude, it went up to like $3,000 that one day. Like, it, it can't. Yeah, it went up an absolute shitload. How do I even, oh yeah, $131 or whatever. And it's- But it has a potential of like, these smaller coins have a potential of going up a bunch. And also here, uh, Cosmos is a really good one. Orchid's a really good one too. Orchid's down 2%. Cosmos goes up? Cosmos, what it does is it's like a 5% APY, which means it'll pay you to hold money in that account. You put 50 into that. Yeah. You just, um, 
when you're trading, you want to start off by not putting like uh, too much because yeah. then you'll see it as money. Okay. And you'll trade emotionally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which is like, you don't want to trade emotionally because if it goes up, you'll be like, oh, it's going up, it's going up. You're super excited. You don't want to pull out. But if it's going down, you get really scared and then you pull out and that's when you actually are losing money, losing value. Seems like what everyone says is like, when it's going down, don't sell, hold. Hold or buy more, because it's at a dip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's going up, sell at what you're happy with. Yeah. And then when it goes down again, buy. That makes sense. So you're saying a lot of people- That's how you nervous. day trade. Yeah, they, they get really nervous. Okay, okay. And they're like, they're thinking that they're losing money, but the value has gone down um, temporarily. Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of a trip, dude, honestly. I'm, I'm very glad that I started investing because, I mean, that shit has, you know, a thousand to seven thousand. Like, that's definitely like not life changing money, but it's damn near close, you know? Yeah, I know, for real. Yeah. A lot of people call me Bihau. Bihau. Yeah. <laughs> or shredded redheaded. No one called me that. But, uh, dude, do you. And the fucking ginger ninja is probably the, the first ginger one. ninja? Ginger okay, ninja. that's like lit as That's pretty lit. That's <laughs> hella lit, bro. Yeah, dude. Yeah, what are you gonna say? What have we what have we talked about tonight that we're leaving out? We've talked about you and your job, what you're doing for that job. We've talked about the big thing that I really wanted to talk about that we spent a good amount of time on is crypto, which crypto. is dope. That was like the main thing I really wanted Definitely. to like. Yeah. yeah. And I fucking dude, I invested like what, three hundred tonight? Let's just, go, bro. Just Let's keep go. watching Let's it. Go. Just keep watching it. Um Okay, you said you're starting a new job in a couple of days? Um, yeah, I mean, I work at the cliffs right now. I've been working there for a while now. Um, you know, a job's a job. I used to, I used to be like, oh, I spent so much time, like time wasted being like, oh, like ah, my, my job means so much to me. Like I really want pr to get promoted and, uh, from a busser to a server. And now it's just a job's a job. Like you, you just do what you got to do for money and stuff. And, uh, humility is like huge, you know, like I like to be the Swiss army knife. So I used to be the marketing manager for Woodstocks, but I'd happily jump in and wash dishes and I'd like, you know, do driving shifts, make pizzas. Like it, it really reflects on yourself and your life outside of that. You know, it's, it's important to be, well, well the thing is, I, I hope other people appreciated it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, oh, uh, dude, right now I'm like two episodes away from finishing Lost. It's like, it's, it's such a weird show, but I like it a lot. And uh, there's this one scene where like um, John Locke is explaining that he could like cut open a moth cocoon and that moth could easily get out of the cocoon and fly away, but it wouldn't be strong enough to like, to survive or whatever and he says that like uh nature's way of giving us strength is through struggle so like you know through life you'll have certain struggles and that's what makes you stronger and a better individual in the long run and that really resonated with me so like the more that like the dishes are kicking your ass at 3 a.m 3 a.m I had to do dishes till 3 a.m. sometimes at Woodstock. What time are you guys fucking close? 12. And we'd just be like, so Three many dishes. Three hours of dishes? How is that even possible? I don't even know. <laughs> I remember getting home one time at like 3 a.m. I was like, this is fucked. You better be getting some free pizza. I got hella free pizza. Okay, okay. But at a certain point, you don't you don't want to eat that shit anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, so over it. Like, oh man, but dude, like. Like, I love, like, struggle because it makes you stronger. It makes you better. Like, they, yeah. there's a quote I also like that's, like, if you make, if you turn your weaknesses into strengths, you'll only have strengths. That kind of shit. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, like, hella philosophical. People hate it. <laughs> how, how long have you been working at the Cliffs for? A few months. 
Okay. Not and, that long. Okay, so they have a reason to keep you at Busser. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I told them I have like a few years serving experience at Olive Garden. Shout out to my Olive Garden homies. Sarah. Sarah just slid up on my story, bro. Sarah's dope as fuck. She's Let's one go. of my favorite people. She's like the manager there, yeah? Yeah, she's so cool. That's dope, She's bro. so cool. That's dope. Um, Do you text her when you're like, yo, I can't make it to work today? Uh, like, is she the person to talk to or no? Yeah, she's... She's definitely bailed me out of a couple of bad situations. <laughs> oh, like, oh man. That's funny, bro. Yeah. That's how fucking funny. Dude, Olive Garden was fucked, bro. You realize they had like unlimited drinks, unlimited soup and salad with every entree. They had unlimited entrees. And what then, do you mean unlimited entrees? Like the so, fucking buffet? It was like <laughs> it was like, all right, if you got like one lasagna or whatever. Or like one bowl of fettuccine fucking Alfredo, you could get smaller, unlimited smaller portions of like whatever you want, like lasagna or spaghetti and stuff. And then they'd, they'd be like, "Oh, I want more soup, more soup, like more." Like you'd just be running back and forth. The amount of tables you could have was three. The maximum amount of tables you could have is three. Because there's just so much running back and forth. To these. Why would they give you unlimited soups and entrees? Because. <laughs> Were they serving Cause, small? Because they're fucked. Um, people would just come and just like... They'd so it's like a buffet. Stuff. Just pay the entree price. You get as much food as you want. Yeah, okay. it was I easily like the hardest job for the like greatest amount of people that I've ever met. Like uh, those, okay. those fucking guys like are the reason I stayed behind. So the staff was lit. The staff was That's lit. Makes our, the job our parties right were lit. It was okay. like during the Royal Street days. Like I lived like like a quarter mile away so the commute was like two minutes damn you'd walk there sometimes probably nope, never Skate? walked there uh, bike. just drove my car because every was, single shift you never skated or biked no it was, drove. it was probably like a half mile away so it wasn't okay. like too too close maybe it was like a three-fourths mile away okay it was like still far enough to where i was like Fuck this, I don't want to 15 minute walk but if i didn't have a car I definitely would have skated every day easy Dude, biking would have probably been a very fun option. Definitely. You guys serve wine and beer there. People would get trashed. Hard alcohol? Yeah, we had a good bar. You guys had a liquor license? Yeah. Jeez, okay. Dude, you know what? Let's talk about that shit right now. Let's talk about that right the fuck now, dude. And I, I love, I haven't gotten I mean, I take that back, actually. I Okay, I like getting political on some of these podcasts. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> dude, is this for me? This is for you. Dude, oh, that's dude. beautiful. Hey, guys, this is what, uh, this is, I hope you can see this, but this is what, uh, <laughs> this is what Paisley just fixed up for me, so I fucking appreciate you, because what? honestly, like, I was missing the, the what I was gonna say about, um, I was gonna, I was originally saying like I like to get a little dicey and political on here. Oh yeah. You know, like I, I live for the controversy. Yeah. Man. But I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, okay. Liquor licenses. Yeah, okay. Homeboy Taj was like, yeah, like per square mile or like per capita or whatever, like only a few restaurants can have a liquor license. Oh, that's true. Why can't why can't I like why can't anybody have a liquor license? Yo, you want to come into our, our establishment that you're already paying money, food, you're, you're expecting good service. Like, dude, why can't we serve you hard fucking alcohol? Who the fuck cares, bro? You dude, if you are fooled and you you can think of any reason to come up with saying like, oh no, it, it, it's this and the the the, the, the taxes and the safety. If you come up with any bullshit excuse like that, you are living in 1984, and I personally don't want to live by that story. And the funny thing is, you should all be able the to politicians, do more, all the politicians were like 20 in 1984, and now they're just like you know super old and super outdated and shit. But hell, the fucking outdated, bro. If you want to serve so fucking vodka shots and ski shot, dude. Do whatever your restaurant desires, bro. Yeah. As you know, no, not everything. I don't even <laughs> understand that, dude. Like, can you pay me for a liquor license? It's, it's half like, a million. Yeah, is it half a million? I thought it was like seven fifty, seven hundred fifty thousand. Oh, my bad. More, <laughs> more, more. My bad. Like, <laughs> it's just a joke, man. Like, why are there liquor licenses? How do you even me? make that money back? Like, 
can you tell me right now why there are liquor licenses? Just tell me. Like, tell me your best reason. Because you know more than I do, guaranteed. <sighs> Shit, man. I don't know. But I, I would think that, like, if every place could sell liquor, we'd all just getting we'd all just be trashed all the time. Like, every... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, like... Imagine, like, every place... I mean, that's a good point. Like, every 7-Eleven has liquor. Do they have liquor licenses? No idea. That's just... Yeah. No idea. But, yeah, no, like... It just makes no sense. I'm not much of a politician, but I think there needs to be a revolution, people. Invest in Doge. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> Dude, it's like... Yeah, I yeah. That that's just one of the like the wonders of the world I'll never understand. Why can't every restaurant have a liquor license? Dude. It it just doesn't make sense as to like You know what's trippy though? Is I could go on Google right now and just look that up. Like Would Google have the answer? Yeah. I mean like Google has most answers to most things and like that's just it's really hard to like it would be very hard for our like grandparents or like even our parents if we were to go back in time and be like, hey, one day we'll have a, a device in our pockets that can literally tell us anything. Yeah. Like that's trippy. That's trippy, huh? Yeah. What do you think our kids or our grandkids are gonna be able to tell us? Are you gonna have kids? Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, but like way later. Dude, you're gonna be a trippy ass father, bro. And you're gonna be bald too. Definitely. You're gonna yeah. be bald. Dude, I shaved my head bald two months ago and now it's like kind of grown back nice. Yeah. But that was one of the best things I've ever done. In Are you serious? Life. Yeah. Going bald? Dead ass. Was like, your hair longer than that? Yeah, it's definitely longer. It's like, it was kind of like an inch and a half, two inches. Longer? And you just kept it at like an inch and a half, two inches forever? Yeah, just around that. Because I can't... I wish I can go your length, bro. But you my can't hair, go your length? I wish I could. But my hair gets really thin the, like, longer it gets. So I'll just, like, wake up one morning with just, like, the worst bad head ever. Like, my hair is just sticking out. I have the funniest videos of me, like... See, your hair is, like, much thicker, so, like, it naturally goes down and shit, right? My, what does your hair do? It would just, like, stick up. Dude, eventually your hair falls. Like eventually this fell down. Like really? it took a while, but eventually it just goes. Word, word. You know what I mean? Maybe like I should takes... try. I definitely want to try again because, bro, I wish I had your hair, man. Like I've always wanted super long hair. Like, Damn, that bro. Person. One day though, like I'm, I'm probably never going to do that again. But when I did shave my head, I went like full shave, like full razor to it and stuff. Razor? Like a blade? Yeah. Like uh... it was bald, bald. And I had like the whole Tenzin look, you know, like from Legend of Korra and shit. Did you keep the facial hair? Yeah. I Let's felt, go. Yeah, I felt like a monk. Like legitimately felt like a monk. Like I um, I had two choices at that point. I could either be like self-conscious about being bald or I can embrace it. And I actually regained like a ton of my own personal confidence. Um, and that actually like super, super helped me. Like in a really, really good way. That's lit, bro. Like, I was just like, I embraced it. I was like joking around with it. And like, it just, man, I tell you what, bro. Everyone should try it once, at least. Just going straight bald? It, like, I don't know, man. Those airbenders are onto something, bro. Like, monks are onto something, man. Like, you probably slept like a baby rock on the first night you did it on your pillow. Like the the thing is, your scalp skin has never felt a pillow before until you did. You it was know? weird as fuck. Like, really, it felt weird, like cold, like it, cool, <laughs> but not cold, but cool. It wasn't as cold as I thought, but like, um, what was something that? Felt, oh, my putting on my hat. That was weird. I was like, what the fuck? Every time I looked in the mirror, I was like, whoa, what the fuck? But then eventually, I got used to it, and um, people that didn't know me before were like, hey, you look normal. You just look normal with the ball pen. Like, they only thought I, like people that knew me before thought I looked weird because they had seen me before. You know? Yeah. But damn, I am so glad that my roommate fucked up my hair and I had to go ball sick. Like, I, you know, the confidence to pull it off and shit. It was like, 
I feel like I've never really seen you though with like long hair. It's like, like I feel like uh, whenever I've seen Brian, it's been that length. Yeah. Maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter. Really? Yeah, it's been like uh You've never man bunned it. I've man bunned it. You man bunned it? Yeah. When? I've man bunned it. Have I seen I've you with a man bun? A small man bun, but it's something. Okay. And dude, I looked really good with the man bun. I was like pulling off <laughs> like, like yeah, I don't know, like uh that one actor. Like yeah, I don't know. Some Norwegian actor. Have you, do you have a girlfriend right now? Uh, I have a girl in my life. Like, you know, I like to see one girl at a time or whatever. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, she she's cool. She's off doing her own thing right now. She's in, like, Brazil. Brazil? Mm-hmm. Damn. She travels a lot. Okay. And I don't know, like, she, I'm super picky with chicks, you know? Like, I really like, like, girls. I think they're attractive and stuff. But, like, um... When they like impress me in certain ways, like she knows piano super well. She was, uh, she teaches kids who play piano and she does it through color and like senses. So like uh, C is red and she uses like a strawberry. And she'll be like, what, what does the strawberry look like? And it's like, is it rugged or is it soft? And it's like, you start to picture the strawberry, is it juicy or dry? It's juicy. And it's like, and then she'll keep playing C in the background and shit and like, uh, I don't know, like, you, like, looks are great, you know, like, but you should have, like, a personal connection with, you know, the girls that you're seeing or whatever. That's just me. Yeah. No, that, make, make, that makes I've sense. I've dated a lot of girls where I'm like, well, you know, we've had a lot of, like, great sex and shit. Like, this is, but what's next? Like, I have nothing to connect with you. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know. I look for girls that I could like talk to for a really long time. And she's one of them, so. Have you ever gotten laid from working? Cause you, you've been in the restaurant game a while, it seems like. Have Definitely. you ever gotten laid or like hung out with a girl from the restaurant business? You have? Okay. Yeah, a lot. Dude, yeah. from like, I'm, and I'm saying customers, customers not coworkers, not only customers, um, no? Okay. Maybe, I don't think so. Not, not customers, unfortunately. Did you get with like a, a MILF one time? Me? Yeah. You've heard about this? <laughs> I, I, I think so. Like, I don't know. That just kind of <laughs> random memory came up that you got with a MILF. Um, yes. <laughs> My and that, that's its own, like, the full story is like a long, like, like it's a good story, oh, but like every like, chick story is long, bro. It, it it was a great experience, and you know, like it, it happened a couple of times, thankfully. Who the how, wait? How did you hear about this, bro? Bro, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro, that's funny that like 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 someone can have you know like you know some stories and like like obviously I know my friend group knows that story, yeah. but like. You're someone I kind of know, but like we don't know each yeah, other. Yeah, we got you know? a lot of mutual friends. You know? A lot of mutual friends. Honestly, though, for real. I'm, I'm like pretty sure you told me like one time. I just thought memory came up randomly. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm tripping. Yeah. Maybe I'm tripping. Um, it's probably at a Royal Street party and you're like, dude, I just let's fuck this milk. Like, yeah. No, that, that's. I'm probably. sure she's been to the Royal Street parties. It's like a few years ago. Like, dude, she's 19. I. That's dope. Here. <laughs> that's dope. You're not 20, Paisley. I just turned 20 in November. Sweet. <laughs> what? That's no, cool. you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think I just turned 19? Yeah. Okay. So when okay when I moved to Oregon, you were 19. Yeah. Just turned 19. Yeah. So you just turned 20. Dude, happy done. fucking birthday. Yeah. Thank you. Happy, happy <laughs> birthday as of three months ago. <laughs> Did we... Okay, wait, wait, wait. It sounds like Evan's up with some shit. Evan, yeah, Evan's brewing right now. <laughs> Literally brewing. Dude, he was... Um, air, air drying his bike. He was blow drying his bicycle. I've never seen anybody do that before. That's commitment. Huh? How did he get one? He washed it. He got it dirty, then washed, washed it, then blow, um, blow dried it. I mean, he treats like that bike pretty damn good. It's a nice bike. 
Dude, he treats it like this one dude that I grew up next to that would wash his red Corvette every single day. Was he old? 30s or 40s. Okay. He would wash his car every fucking day. Why? <laughs> every day. No, no, guys. So every day. Water, yeah. Every day. I, every single day. I barely wash my car because it just gets dirty the next day. Yeah. Unless it's the inside. I've been trying to maintain that. I used to have the nastiest fucking inside of my car. And then I was like, all right, it's time to get the shit detailed. Like, no more, like, random crumbs underneath the seats and shit. And like, oh. I used to have, like, a, a gold minivan called the Yellow Submarine. And uh, that's, I would put surfboards back there. And I'd surf, like, sunrise, you know, car camp all day with the homies at Morro Bay. And then surf sunset. And it just got nasty in there. It's like. You gotta must take, do. Yeah, you gotta must take do. care of your car, especially with those wet wetsuits, dude. Musty as fuck, I bet. Musty huh? as fuck. You gotta take care of that shit. It's, those things will rip fast, your wetsuits, if you don't, like, wash them out and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, okay, well, I gotta go pee again, and I feel like we've been going for a good amount of time, I'm so I'm gonna wrap shit up. Um, yeah. Dude, is there anything that you wanna say or bring up real quick? Anything to the audience? Anyone to, anything to the people that are going to click on this and watch it because you're on here? Uh, Which is going to be a fair amount of people. Lit. Like, lit. dude, Brian, you have a good following, bro. Thank you, bro. You, have a, you have a lit fucking friend group. You have a big friend group. And, like, you're always doing some dope shit. You I appreciate me? that. Yeah, yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Dude. Uh, to those who have made it this far, thank you for watching the whole time. Like, I hope you learned something. And, um, I mean, as a result, like, I hope you take those actions to, like, better yourself. Like, I mean, I never thought I'd be a surfer. And one day might be an individual that you never thought you'd be so just you know keep doing shit and stay happy and yeah thanks for having me bro like i really appreciate it dude you guys heard it from brian himself thanks bro let's go bro let's fucking yeah. go <laughs> appreciate it appreciate dude, it dude that was hella solid bro thanks dude that was very solid